yes, uh, hello. You see my, my screen? No. I think now, now my screen. I don't see your slides and your screen. Now your screen. Excuse me. It's not. It's not clear on the screen. I don't see your slides. Rissam, do you see the slides? No. Still, still, you don't see. No. Uh, Masoud, can you can you send your slides uh, uh, to me or to the Sam through the chat or uh, through mail? Yes, I can. I guess if he sent it, we can uh, do the change of slides. Masoud, do you hear me?
براف اي ويل كول مسؤول اوكي I don't see him now in the in the list of people. Maybe he, he wants to enter again. Uh, yes, I contacted Masood. He will send me the slides. Uh, he has some problem of connections, so uh, he will send me the slide and he will be uh, talking uh, using his phone. He is joining. Hello. Oh. Yes, yes. So I must tell me what happens. Uh, have you sent the slides to Wissam? Or? I have sent the slides uh, to Wissam, but uh, actually the problem is in my uh, Wi-Fi uh, net. It's not, uh, it's not working properly. I don't know this problem. Well, Yes, uh, no, yes. No, yes, we see this, we see the slides. Okay. So, Masoud, you ready to start? Is it you? Are you connected now? Yes, I am connected from my uh, mobile. Okay, anyway. So, uh, then we will begin. Sorry for this technical problem. And uh, the topic of today's presentation is dynamics of persistent Epidemic and optimal control of vaccination. Masood will present. Masood, Masood, you can begin your presentation. Okay. So, um, actually, in this talk, I will introduce our recent finished work, uh, which is Dynamics of Persistent Epidemic and Optimal Control of Vaccination. So, um, 
the contents of uh, the presentation are as follows. Uh, first, uh, we in introduce the epidemic delay model with vaccination. Uh, second, we uh, present a novel method to determine the station resolution of the model without vaccination and then study uh, their stability. <clears throat> also, in this section, we present uh, numerical simulations to analyze the effects of the parameters on the amplitude and period of outbreaks for the model without vaccination. Uh, in the third section, we uh, study epidemic dynamics with vaccination. In the fourth section, we uh, study the optimal control problem. And finally, we present uh, conclusions and further perspectives. So I will, um, okay. I will start the first section by introducing our model, which consists of uh, four compartments. Uh, as we can see, uh, S, uh, susceptible individuals, I, infected, R, re uh, recovered individuals, and uh, V, uh, vaccinated individuals. <clears throat> we also have uh, three time delays, tau one, the disease duration, tau two, the duration of natural immunity, and tau three is the duration of uh, immunity due to vaccine. We also have this function J of T, which uh, represents uh, the size of newly infected compartment. And uh, we can see that it is uh, proportional to the product of the number of susceptible and infected compartments with a rate equals to beta over N, where beta is disease transmission rate and n is the total size of population and uh, we assume that uh, n is a constant in our model also we have uh, the function u of t which uh, determines the size of newly vaccinated individuals <laughs> and it is uh, proportional to the total size of uh, population with uh, with a rate equals to uh, K of T, the control function of vaccination. <laughs> also, we uh, we see in this uh, function the signum of uh, susceptible individuals, which means that um, U of T uh, equals uh, K, T multi K multiplied by N if we have uh, susceptible individuals. Otherwise, uh, U of T equals zero. And uh, the function uh, k of t, uh, which uh, we can call it the control function of vaccination, and uh, we can see uh, from its formula that it is a t capital periodic function, where uh, t capital is uh, the periodicity of vaccination campaigns. And uh, in all of our simulation uh, in this work, we consider that uh, t capital equals one year. So, um, uh, we can uh, say that uh, K of T uh, uh, can, uh, or there is one time interval in which K of T can equals a constant, uh, K0. Uh, otherwise, um, K of T equals zero. And uh, this figure in, uh, uh, yes, this figure in the uh, left, uh, corner of the screen uh, represents the number of newly infected, uh, newly uh, vaccinated individuals, U of T. Uh, we can see that uh, it is a periodic function. Uh, each year, uh, during some uh, time interval, uh, we vaccinated a, a constant number of uh, people in the susceptible compartment. Uh, and actually, uh, in um, in the formula of K of T, of K of T we also uh, see uh, this uh, parameter uh, gamma, which uh, uh, controls uh, uh, the length of uh, this uh, time interval in which we do the vaccination. And there is also another uh, uh, parameter, which is gamma zero, and gamma zero responsible for uh, 
as the initiating of the vaccination process. So gamma zero can uh, actually uh, shift this uh, graph of you uh, or to the right, depending on its value. So actually after uh, uh, explaining the uh, uh, biological meaning of uh, our parameters, uh, we can now describe our model. And uh, now, uh, please. Uh, excuse me, excuse uh, me, Masoud. Uh, I think that some of listeners uh, are not familiar with this model. Uh, in particular, I think that there are some students present here. Uh, could you please explain the meaning of these equations for S, I, and R? In particular, this time delays and how uh, it, it is determined, I mean, uh, with these newly infected individuals, how this uh, newly infected individual centers in, in these equations and why it is the model presented like that. Yes, of course. Uh, so um, to describe this model, we can say actually that uh, at every moment uh, t, uh, this number of individuals, uh, j of t, uh, uh, which are uh, or who are the uh, newly infected individuals will leave the susceptible class to the infected class. Then uh, this uh, j of t minus tau one, the number of people who were infected at time t minus tau one, but they are now recovered. So they uh, move from the infected compartment to the recovered compartment. And then uh, this number of people j of t minus tau one minus tau two, who were infected at this time, uh, they are uh, now, uh, now they have lost their uh, natural immunity uh, against the virus and they are susceptible again. Also, we can uh, uh, observe uh, U of T, the number of newly vaccinated individuals uh, uh, will leave the susceptible class to the vaccinated class. And then U of T minus tau three, uh, this uh, a group of people who were vaccinated at time T minus tau three, uh, now they have uh, lost their uh, immunity uh, due to vaccine and they are susceptible again. So um, this is uh, the description of our model. And uh, some, if we can move to the next slide, please. Yes, thank you. And um, uh, actually our model is uh, completed with uh, the following initial conditions. And also we recall that uh, at uh, every uh, positive uh, moment of time, uh, the sum of all the compartments of our model remain constant and they, equals, they equal the uh, total size of population. So uh, now the next slide. Uh, yes. Uh, Okay, in this, uh, in the second section of our talk, we uh, consider vaccination rate equals zero. Uh, and uh, now we aim to uh, determine the stationary solution for uh, our delay model. And actually we will present a novel method to determining, uh, to determine uh, this, these stationary solutions. So uh, if we get back to, to the model, I think slide number three. Yes, okay. Uh, now uh, we will uh, neglect um, the, the uh, functions U and V because now there is no vaccination. <laughs> so uh, we can observe now from this model that uh, for any constant value of the functions S and R, uh, there is a constant value of j, and this uh, provides a stationary solution for for our for our system without vaccination. Uh, however, this uh, solution doesn't take into account the initial conditions. So, in order to uh, consider this in
<laughs> the sound disappears. Yes, yes, we cannot hear. Masood, there's no sound. We don't hear you. Oh, yes, I'm sorry again for for the connection. Well, you can continue now. We hear you. Okay, so uh, yes, I was. Uh, I don't know where where I where the last thing that you have heard. You can you can begin with the slide. So in fact, it was the slide just appeared and then no sound. Okay. So, in uh, in order to uh, determine the station resolution of our delay model, we uh, uh, we can see from from the equations of the model. Uh, with some, if you could, could please go to slide number three. Yes. So, um, uh, from uh, uh, the first and the second equation, if we integrate them from zero to t, and then substitute uh, this uh, uh, integrals in uh, in the equation one one, then uh, we uh, obtain uh, the uh, equation. Um, I will some please now to to slide yes, five, slide five, uh, previous one. Yes, so we obtain in uh, equation 2.1. Uh, so now uh, to determine the station resolution, we uh, suppose that J of T equals a constant. We will name it J of S. And uh, then uh, by substituting in 2.1, in we obtain the equation 2.2. And actually this equation uh, can be written as a quadratic equation. So next slide. Yes, and uh, uh, this uh, equation uh, has a positive solution uh, given by the formula 2.3, where uh, delta is the discriminant of the quadratic equation and given uh, by uh, formula 2.4. Now to simplify our study, we will uh, consider that the number of infected at time zero equals zero and the, ta and the number of uh, susceptible at time zero equals n. So uh, from equation 2.2, we can find uh, two approximate solutions, station resolutions. The first one is zero, and the second one um, is, uh, is positive only if beta tau one is larger than one, and beta tau one uh, represents the basic repro reproduction number of, of our model. So uh, uh, from that also we can uh, uh, calculate the stationary values of uh, susceptible infected and recovered uh, compartments uh, as in uh, equations 2.6. Yes, so if we now move to the next slide, uh, after uh, determining the station, uh, solutions, we will study their stability. So in order to do that, we will uh, linearize uh, uh, equation 2.1 about uh, the stationary solution by uh, setting uh, J of T equals JS, this uh, stationary solution, uh, plus uh, small uh, perturbation epsilon multiplied by E to the power lambda T. And by keeping the first order terms with respect to epsilon, then we obtain uh, the following equation, 2.7, where the constants A1 and A are given in 2.8. Now, if we uh, set V of t to be equal uh, e to the, to the power lambda t, then uh, we obtain uh, from equation 2.7, we obtain equation uh, 2.9, which we will call it the characteristic equation of our model that from which we obtain also the uh, eigenvalues of the stationary solution. 
uh, we can find uh, that uh, this equation has uh, zero solution. So now we will study the existence of solution of this equation with a positive real part in order to determine the loss of stability of the, of the stationary solution. So all again, to simplify the study, we uh, consider I of zero equals zero and S of zero equals N. Then uh, from equation 2.8, uh, we obtain uh, uh, the uh, following uh, values of uh, constants A1 and A2. Yes, and uh, we, uh, we, we have uh, now the following uh, lemma, lemma one, uh, which uh, states that for a positive stationary solution, JS, if uh, the basic reproduction number is larger than, larger than one, then uh, the characteristic equation doesn't have any positive real solutions. While uh, lemma two uh, states that for uh, the zero stationary solution, if basic reproduction number is larger than one, then characteristic equation has exactly one positive real solution. Otherwise, it has exactly one negative real solution. And uh, theorem one uh, states that uh, there exists some a critical value for the basic reproduction number, which is larger than one and for which the characteristic equation has a pure imaginary solution for any positive values of, of tau one and tau two. So to summarize uh, the previous theorems, uh, we can say that um, there is a stationary solution, JS equals zero, which loses its stability when basic reproduction number is larger than one. And then uh, another stationary solution, uh, another positive stationary solution appears, and uh, there exists some critical value uh, for, for the basic reproduction number for which the oscillatory instability of the positive uh, stationary solution happens. So now, uh, in in this, in uh, no, uh, some I think. Okay, yes, yes, this one. Uh, no, no, this. Um, now, if we, uh, uh, if we consider the eigenvalue lambda to be a complex number and uh, substitute it in the characteristic equation, then we obtain uh, these two equations, uh, 2.10 and 2.11, where x is the real part and y is the, the imaginary part of the eigenvalue. Uh, now, uh, if we plot uh, these two equations uh, as in figure one, uh, the uh, left panel for uh, the following values of uh, parameters and initial conditions, then uh, we can obtain this uh, blue and red curves uh, and their intersection uh, uh, give us the um, uh, station, the, uh, eigen, the complex eigenvalues of the stationary solution. So in, in this figure, we can uh, observe a pair of uh, complex um, eigenvalues with uh, conjugate eigenvalues with uh, a positive real part, which uh, determines the instability of, of the uh, stationary solutions. And in the right uh, panel, we can uh, see uh, a direct simulations for, uh, for uh, by our model, which uh, uh, show the uh, uh, the uh, infected uh, uh, oscillations uh, as, uh, as it is uh, clear for us. And actually, uh, to uh, determine the periodicity of uh, of uh, uh, this. Uh, 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 divide uh, two pi uh, by the uh, imaginary part of of the eigenvalue. Yes, and uh, now in the next slide, uh, we will present uh, some numerical simulations to verify the effect of. Uh, uh, disease transmission rate beta and disease duration tau one disease. Uh, and uh, I'm sorry, and, and the period of immunity waning tau two on the amplitude and the period of outbreaks uh, for our model without vaccination. 
So uh, in, uh, in the left panel, we can see that for any uh, fixed values of tau1 and tau2, uh, increasing the disease transmission rate uh, will lead to the increasing of the amplitude of the outbreaks. And for a sufficiently high value of uh, beta disease transmission rate, uh, we can see that the amplitude of the outbreaks uh, can, equals, can equal the uh, total size of population. While in uh, the uh, um, right uh, panel, panel B, we can observe that uh, increasing uh, the disease transmission rate will lead to the increase to the decrease of the period of the outbreaks. And for a sufficiently large value of beta, uh, the period of outbreaks uh, can be equal to the sum of disease duration and the uh, uh, duration of natural immunity. So um, now in the next slide, uh, yes, 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 in uh, section three, we uh, will study the influence of vaccination on the dynamic uh, dynamics of epidemic progression. Actually, uh, figure uh, three uh, shows the dependence of this dynamics on the value of the parameter K0, which uh, characterizes the intensity of vaccination. Uh, we can uh, observe for a small value of K0, as in, the, as in, uh, in panel A, that the period of uh, oscillation is the same as without uh, vaccination. And uh, while uh, the amplitude uh, slightly oscillates, <laughs> but, but with the increase in this uh, parameter K0, uh, we can see that uh, the oscillations becomes uh, or become uh, aperiodic, like in panels uh, B, C, D, and E. And uh, also the variation of the amplitude of oscillations uh, becomes more important. For example, if we uh, look at, uh, at panel B, we can see that there are uh, modulated oscillations with an approximated constant period. While in uh, panel C, we, uh, we see that Do you hear my voice? Yes, you can continue. Okay. So in panel C, uh, we can see that uh, the uh, amplitude uh, stabilizes to a smaller value uh, with uh, increased period of oscillations. Uh, in panel D, we can observe that uh, there exists um, a double uh, periodicity. And in the next panel, panel E, uh, we can observe that some of the uh, uh, outbreaks uh, are almost uh, suppressed. And uh, the final uh, panel, panel A, we can uh, observe that for a large value of K0, that uh, uh, there are uh, periodic oscillations with an increased period, uh, this period uh, equal twice as the period of vaccination tau So now, uh, if we move to the next slide, yes, we can observe uh, figure four. <laughs> this figure uh, shows the dependence of L1. Uh, L1 uh, represents uh, the average number of infected individuals. So it shows uh, its dependence on uh, the parameter K0. So uh, we can see that with the increasing of uh, of K0, uh, uh, L1 uh, decreases, but uh, also we can see that after some uh, value of K0, uh, that uh, L1 uh, stabilizes to uh, a constant value. Also, uh, we can uh, observe that the increase in the parameter uh, gamma, uh, which uh, uh, controls the duration of vaccination, that the average number of infected also dec uh, decreases. And uh, as in uh, the light blue um, uh, curve, we can see that if uh, gamma is sufficiently uh, large, then uh, the epidemic outbreak 
bricks are completely suppressed for L1 approach is zero. So now we move to the next slide. Yes, and uh, here uh, we have uh, figure number five, which uh, shows the uh, effect of uh, the uh, duration of vaccine immunity, tau3, on the amplitude of the outbreaks. And um, it can be observed that the increasing of the duration of vaccination immunity <coughs> lead, uh, leads to the decrease uh, of the amplitude of the outbreaks. But um, uh, the, uh, their periodicity uh, almost uh, remain constant. However, for uh, sufficiently large values of tau3, as in, in the last panel, panel F, we can see that the outbreaks uh, completely disappear after the first one. So now in the next slide, we... Um, uh, compare the modeling results with the data, the available data on uh, influenza A epidemic in Norway. Uh, first, I will uh, recall that uh, disease duration for influenza is about one week, while uh, influenza vaccine uh, loses its uh, effectiveness uh, after about five or six months. And um, uh, actually, panel C uh, shows the number of vaccine doses in Norway from 2015 until 2023. Uh, we can see that it is in, uh, increase, increased until 2022, and then after that, it uh, started to uh, decrease. And uh, the vaccination rate, uh, uh, which... Uh, uh, used to uh, obtain this uh, this panel C uh, can be uh, given in uh, the function 3.1, where, where we can notice that the factor uh, A of T plus K0 uh, <coughs> describes the variation of the vaccination rate according to this data. And also uh, the, um, the annual uh, number of doses uh, in the model is calculated with the integral um, that equals to the um, n doses, if you can see it. Uh, uh, so uh, this, uh, yes, and now uh, if we uh, consider it, uh, no, no, please, uh, previous one, yes, on, on panel A, so we, we can observe um, uh, a periodic oscillations of epidemic outbreaks, which uh, are well uh, described by our model uh, from uh, from 2015 until 2020. Uh, actually, uh, also we can observe that uh, the dynamics of influenza A uh, were uh, perturb uh, perturbed uh, in 2021 uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, the model actually predicted a large epidemic uh, peak in 2021, while this peak is absent in the data. But uh, on the other hand, we uh, can see that uh, the model uh, predicted also a small peak in 2022, while it is essentially large in the data. And uh, after that, the model and the data uh, have uh, or maybe present similar uh, results for uh, the data in 2023. Uh, actually, now, uh, in order to uh, take into account the measures of social distancing, we will uh, consider time-dependent disease transmission rate, beta of t, uh, which uh, equals zero in uh, 2022 in order to uh, get rid of the outbreak in this year. And uh, it is a, pos a positive constant before and after that. And uh, actually, uh, we can see that uh, our model uh, uh, describe this uh, outbreaks of of influenza uh, quite well, uh, uh, despite of, of their complex complexity. 
So now in the next uh, slide. Yes, uh, in, the, in, in the section number four, we will uh, study the optimal control problem. And uh, we uh, we seek uh, in this section to determine the most efficient strategy for controlling the propagation of epidemic disease, which uh, can be defined as an optimal control problem in which we aim to reduce over a period of time uh, some objective function related to the cost of uh, the control uh, measurements and the size of infected compartments as uh, uh, we can see in integral uh, ln where uh, um, uh, d0 here uh, represents the social cost per infected individuals and uh, c0 uh, represents the cost uh, per vaccine dose and the side effects. And uh, if we uh, normalized D0, meaning we uh, set D0 equals one, then um, uh, uh, the function LN uh, uh, can be uh, written in 4.1. And our goal uh, uh, here is to uh, find the minimum value of this function uh, with respect to gamma and gamma zero. Uh, I will recall that gamma uh, is responsible uh, to determine the length of the time interval in which we do vaccination and uh, gamma zero. Uh, there is a problem with sound, Masoud. We don't hear you. Uh, I will contact Masood. So now, now slides also disappear. So what what is happening? Yes, slides are back. Yes, Mas yes I'm here. Yes, I'm trying to contact him. Uh, he's not replying. I will try to call. No, no, I, I am here. So. Yes, you can continue. So in slide 16, uh, Yes, uh, we see uh, seven. Uh, actually, uh, the panel D of this figure shows uh, the cost uh, function 
uh, depending on uh, on these parameters gamma and gamma zero and uh, its minimum uh, is rich uh, inside the domain for uh, uh, for some uh, particular values of gamma, gamma zero uh, corresponding to the uh, parameters and conditions of of this figure so now if we move to the next slide Yes, uh, yes, we can see the figure number eight, which uh, shows the cost function for different values of the parameter C, which uh, determines the cost of vaccination. So uh, for a small value of D, uh, we notice that L decreases as a function of gamma, as in panels A and B. Uh, so uh, we can say that L decreases with the increase in vaccination and it is uh, practically independent of, uh, of the parameter gamma zero. So uh, in this case, the minimization of L uh, uh, happens for uh, the, ma the maximal vaccination. As it is shown in the device. Now uh, in, uh, in panel C, we can... Uh, uh, see uh, the uh, minimum of L appears start to appears for larger value of C, and uh, this minimum becomes global for sufficiently large vaccination goal, as in uh, panel D. In this case, we can see, say that the optimal vaccination strategy consists of an choice of the intensity and timing of vaccination. Yes, and now the next slide. Yes. Uh, actually, uh, a similar approach can be uh, used for, uh, or if we want to uh, uh, vaccinate a month a year. So, for example, if we want to vaccinate uh, twice a year, then uh, the control uh, function uh, can uh, be um, taken as in function 4.2 and um, in this case the overall control problem uh, will be uh, to determine this uh, quadruple uh, which, uh, uh, by which we obtain the minimum uh, the minimum value of the uh, uh, objective function uh, which determines the cost of vaccination. So, uh, yes, so finally, in, uh, in in the final section, we uh, will um, uh, uh, highlight uh, some of the more uh, important points in this work. So first, uh, we have proposed an epidemiological uh, model based on delay differential equations with uh, representing the disease duration, the period of natural immunity, and the duration of uh, vaccine immunity. Uh, second, we have uh, used uh, uh, a novel method uh, to uh, uh, determining the uh, station resolution of the model equations and then uh, study uh, their stability or based on and um, yeah, the uh, positive uh, station resolution appears for the basic reproduction number uh, larger than one then it is uh, it, it loses its stability and uh, lead to uh, periodic oscillations when the basic reproduction number exceeds uh, exceeds some critical value. We have uh, determined uh, this critical value and also the period of uh, emerging oscillations. Uh, moreover, the um, numerical uh, simulations uh, showed uh, that the increase in the disease transmission rate leads to uh, increase of, uh, of the amplitude and decrease of the period of the outbreaks. And uh, for a large value of, 
of disease transmission rate the, the period of outbreaks approaches the sum of disease duration and the duration of natural immunity in the mode. Also, uh, from uh, numerical simulations, we uh, have seen that periodic vaccination it changes the epidemic dynamics and uh, results modulated uh, oscillations and influence the period of oscillations. Uh, also, the and immunity can affect the periodic. control of vaccination uh, uh, enables us to uh, find the minimum uh, cost of the epidemic and if uh, the cost of vaccination is low then the optimal cost is uh, rich for uh, the maximum uh, value of vaccination while if the vaccination cost is sufficiently high then uh, it can actually influence the result of optimization and the minimal value in this case can be uh, reached uh, for some uh, particular choice of the parameters depending on the timing of the vaccination campaign. However, uh, there are some limitations uh, of our study. First, uh, uh, we can see that uh, discrete delays uh, uh, prescribe single values to the disease duration and immunity waning instead of some distrib uh, distributions. Uh, um, next, uh, we have uh, neglect uh, the exposed compartment and we assumed that the population is homogeneous with uh, constant uh, size. Actually, these questions and some more, uh, including different vaccination strategies, uh, represent interesting uh, open questions for future works. And thank you for your attention. This presentation is over. Yes, thank you, Masoud, for this presentation. We are in time, in spite of some technical uh, difficulties. So please, other questions. No questions at the moment, so I will uh, give some comments. So with some return please to the previous slide. Uh, yes, this one. So limitations, you say discrete delay prescribe single values of, uh, of the disease duration and immunity waning instead of some distributions. So uh, you might recall that uh, with, uh, well, for some previous studies, indeed, we considered this distributed uh, recovery and death rates and disease uh, duration uh, was in fact distributed, not a single delay, but distributed delay. So please comment on that. Yes, I'm sorry, Professor, but uh, I did not hear all the all the question it sounds well, I was clear. okay I was saying that yes. uh, this model with mm -hmm. constant delays was derived from a more general model with distributed delays yes uh, in our previous work yes and these models with distributed delay and with fixed delay were compared and it was shown that this simplified model which you presented today in fact it gives a good approximation of that more complete model with distributed yeah. delay so from this point of view we have justification of this simplified model yeah. uh, yes uh, i'd like also to return with some to slide 14. i think this is an interesting slide and I would like to repeat, yes, this slide. It's a little bit small, but um, probably we can see in this figure A. Oh, yes, it's, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes, 
uh, if you can zoom on these figures in the, at the top, yes, go go move up. Yes, this yes, this one now. Good, good. Yes, this is. I think that uh, these are really nice figures, and amazingly, amazingly, there is a very good correspondence between uh, the data. The data are shown with dot with black dots, and simulations are shown with red curves. Yes. So. We see that, and both of them for the number of infected individuals. We see that these red curves give a good description of the data of the black dots. This is not at all obvious. These are not periodic oscillations. This, the amplitude of these oscillation, oscillations is not constant. Yes. So they are periodic. A periodic. Why they are periodic? Because, in fact, there are two different oscillations. What we call intrinsic oscillations of epidemic outbreaks. They are periodic. In some previous figure, we have seen and these periodic important. periodic oscillations without vaccination. So we have intrinsic oscillations of epidemic outbreaks with some period, and we have also periodicity of vaccination with eventually different period. We have a superposition of these two different oscillations, and they give us this aperiodic oscillations, and then uh, you uh, were able to find the values of parameters. It was parameter fitting. Mm, well, some parameters were taken from the data. Uh, from the data, the number of vaccinated people were taken from the data, but some other parameters were fitted, and uh, this allowed you to describe this epidemiological data. So this mm. is already. Uh, Quite, uh, quite interesting, quite unexpected. I did not, I did not think that we can get such a good description of this such complex data. Uh, another interesting point is about this COVID-19. So we see you explained that, but I will repeat because I think that uh, this is also an interesting point. We see that in 2021 there is a very large. Uh, outbreak predicted by the model. This uh, large red spike. But in reality, in the data, no spike at all. Why? So in 2021, there were no seasonal influenza because of the measures of social distance, uh, distance accepted uh, due to COVID-19. So we stayed at home, we wear masks. Because of that, uh, seasonal influenza was completely suppressed. This is a very interesting point. Mm -hmm. So you see in 21, no black dots. So on the other hand, these black dots, this seasonal influenza appeared the next year, 22. And very big outbreak because because well people did not did not uh, have influenza the previous year so all these people were uh, got this influenza in 22 and in 23. So how to compare uh, how to take into account this uh, effect in the simulation? So what we do we say that. Uh, in the model, now in the model, we say that uh, disease transmission rate in 21 is zero for influenza. No disease transmission uh, because of social distance. So we by that, in the right figure, we completely suppress uh, this influenza in 21 in simulations. Uh, we, we say that uh, that well, our coefficient beta, beta disease transmission rate, it is 0 and 21 because of all these measures of social distancing. 
So no influenza in 21. But then we say, okay, the measures of social distances, uh, distancing are finished in 21. Uh, and then we see that in 22, uh, there is a large uh, outbreak uh, also in the simulations, this large red spike. What is interesting here, you see, it's not exactly in the same time as black dots. So there is some time difference between simulations and data. Why it is like that? Uh, in fact, it depends uh, on the time period of the social distancing. So during which period of time we said beta disease transmission rate equals zero. So uh, Masoud, I think that you did not verify, but what I think that if you take a, a little bit larger time interval for which yeah. beta equals zero, then this red spike will move to the right. Yes. Is it, cor is it also, correct? Also in the next uh, uh, peak also, maybe it will move yes. to the right. So we don't know. You did not check that. You did not check that. No, but this, no, but no. this is this is indeed interesting because um, in the data we see that outbreaks in 2022 and 23, the the distance between them is shorter than usual. The periodicity is shorter, and I think that this change is because of this. Uh, well, measures of social distancing. Uh, related to COVID, uh, there are also some uh, some possible other factors influences uh, influencing these outbreaks related to seasonal what we discuss now the seasonal influenza. Masoud, you understand what I say? So this bitter yeah. bitter effect is not constant when we when we talk about seasonal influenza. Uh, why it is seasonal? Because because disease transmission rate is large larger in the winter se season. It is smaller in mm -hmm. the summer season. So beta is not constant. Beta is a periodic function. This can also influence these outbreaks, and this is why I think that these two outbreaks and and in 22 and 23 the distance between is shorter because the first peak moved to the right because of the measures of social distancing in, in 22. Yeah. But in 23, it was exactly just in the usual time for influenza because of because of the seasonal periodicity. Do you understand what I say now, Masoud? Yeah. yeah. The first peak yeah. moved to the right because of the measures of social distancing, but the second peak, it stayed as it should be. Because it is seasonal, because it is, it should be in winter time, and it will not move to the left or to the right. So, but okay, we, we study the seasonal seasonal effects now, but then we can also think about well, more precise description of this data taken into account COVID nineteen. We can um, we can talk about this later. But what also is interesting here, and I think that you did not mention, if we take the next year twenty four. Yes. In, 20, it's in 24, so if you look, yes, if you look at the left figure, there is a small outbreak. Yes. But, in, but in the right figure, there is a large outbreak. And uh, so we can we can wait for some time the next year. In fact, this see which it, one it is it is this, this season which starts which starts now. So uh, this 20, the season, the winter season 23, 24, whether uh, this uh, seasonal outbreak, influenza outbreak will be small or will be large. This is an interesting question and we will see how it works. Mm -hmm. So these are some comments I wanted to, uh, to give about this, um, uh, this comparison with the data. Well, uh, also, Another question is related to some. It was some previous slide. Slide with some. If you go back, I will. I will tell you where to stop. Uh, well, uh, yeah. Uh, now wait. 
Yeah, the previous one, yes, yes. Go back. Go. Yeah, well, yes, this one. So what is also interesting here is that, uh, in fact, in what we see in this figure, we increase the number of vaccinated people, we increase the vaccination rate, but we cannot completely suppress this uh, epidemic outbreaks. So the distance bet between them, the time period between them be becomes larger, but we cannot completely suppress them. Why it is like that? So you see in the first figure, figure A, in, uh, there are these frequent outbreaks, it's intrinsic outbreaks. And in the last figure, uh, there are these outbreaks determined by vaccination, but this vaccination does not allow us to completely suppress the epidemic outbreaks. So this is something important. Why it is like that? Because it also depends uh, on the duration of vaccination. So you explained it in the next slide, but but uh, I want to repeat that. So if we fix the duration of vaccination, uh, then uh, if this period of vaccination is short, we cannot completely suppress an uh, epidemic. If we increase the period of the period of vaccination, the vaccination campaign, if it is longer, and uh, with some show, please, the next slide. Yes, this one. So, uh, in fact, well, we skip some details, but uh, more or less we can say that gamma here determines duration of the vaccination campaign. If gamma is large, this gives us that the duration of vaccination campaign is large enough. Then, so the duration is large, and then we increase the intensity of vaccination during this vaccination period. This is K0. So if, if the time interval of vaccination is large enough, and if the number of people vaccinated during this time period is large enough, then we can completely suppress this this period, period uh, this outbreak. So the conclusion is that vaccination campaign should be long enough. Then we can uh, suppress uh, the epidemic. Otherwise, we cannot do it. Well, this these are some some comments I'd like to do. If there are no other questions or comments, I don't see. If just questions from our listeners. So then uh, we stop our, we finish our seminar for today. Uh, let us thank all, all uh, our speaker, Masood, also our listeners. Well, have a good day. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye.